with Biden in the White House and weaponizing law enforcement in ways that were unimaginable just five or 10 years ago, now more than ever, you must know your rights when it comes to police interactions. Watch this video, guys, learn the facts, and join the fight for freedom today. Hey guys, Aaron Dorr here with an update for gun owners. The last couple of videos that we have done have been different from our normal congressional or state level legislative updates. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, we're in we're in recess in most of our state capitals across the country right now. And the same thing, it's almost true in Congress. They're almost out of session for summertime break. And so things are a little bit slower now than they are for much of the rest of the calendar year. But the other reason why we're doing this is that we all know now that the, the America we live in today is not the same America that it was several years ago. Since the Biden crime family occupied the White House, things are just different. Conservatives across the country are being harassed by weaponized law enforcement in a way that we have never seen before. I mean, if I had told you, for example, 10 years ago that we would have a sitting U.S. president use the power of his office to try to muzzle his leading political opponent, you would have laughed at me. I, I would have laughed at me 10 years ago. But that's where we are today. We have Joe Biden using the power of his office to directly go after President Trump. Now, it doesn't matter if we agree on if President Trump is guilty, if he's innocent, if it's somewhere in between. The fact of the matter is that the double standard has never been more apparent. Just take Hunter Biden. President Trump maintains his innocence. But Hunter Biden did no such thing. He recently pled guilty and admitted that he is a coke addict. He admitted that he was using cocaine when he signed his 4473 form and lied on his gun application when he bought a handgun, which is a felony. And he admitted to multiple counts of tax evasion. Anybody else in America who admits to multiple felony charges, especially involving firearms and narcotics, would be in prison. But Hunter Biden, because he's on the right side of the Biden crime family, gets pre-trial diversion, a.k.a. no jail time. So the double standard is obvious. It is objective. It is not disputable amongst anybody with a rational thought left in their brain. And so we have got to, as gun owners, be real about the world that we are living in these days. And that's, that's spawned a lot of you to ask us a lot of questions after our previous videos on how to interact with law enforcement. Because, you know, I get it. I grew up in northwest Iowa in the very early 80s. And it felt like uh, Norman Rockwell was my childhood. Those paintings, that's the life I grew up in. And we never thought twice about talking to cops. We never had a problem answering their questions. We saw them as protectors. We saw them as people who we could look up to for help if things were bad. And that was the life that I lived. Uh, many of you probably experienced a similar upbringing. But we're just not in that situation any longer. There are still all kinds of law enforcement members at state and federal level and county level that uh, love the Second Amendment, that love freedom. But there are many that do not. And with the Biden White House and the Biden DOJ, the Biden crime family, to get my vernacular straight, using the power of their office to force those agencies to come after conservatives, gun owners, uh, pro-lifers, candidates, you know, all kinds of people, we have to be more careful than we were a generation or two ago. So we're going to break down the three types of police encounters so gunners know what the difference is because these different types of encounters carry with them differing types of constitutional protections. You must know about this. So number one, the most elemental stop or encounter rather is a consensual police encounter, a consensual police encounter. Understand right off the bat, consensual encounters contain zero constitutional protections because, number one, you're allowed to leave. You're not required to stay and engage in a conversation with a law enforcement officer if it's a consensual situation. What is an example of that? Um, you're at the park with your wife and kids on a weekend and an officer walks up and asks if you have any firearms on your person or if you've seen a firearms in the park or narcotics are open containers, whatever the case may be. You're uh, putting your groceries away in the back of your minivan at Walmart. Same thing. An officer walks up or he drives by and he asks you a question. Hey, have you seen any criminals in the parking lot? <laughs> any guns in your vehicle? Any guns on your person? These are consensual encounters. And because they're consensual, you are free to leave. 
And you should do that. That's kind of sub point number one. You're free to leave and you should. Because they're consensual encounters, you do not have to give consent to have your person or your property searched. And you never should under any circumstances. Again, they, they might say, we just want to check, we'll check your car for any narcotics or weapons. Or we want to check your backpack. We want to check your phone. You do not have to give consent to allow your, your, your property or your person to be searched in a consensual encounter. And you should never, ever give that consent. So point number three, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to talk. And again, I know this goes counter to how most of us were raised, but we're not in the same America anymore. And so you're not required to answer questions and you should not answer questions during these encounters. And finally, number four, many of you have asked us, can I call my, my lawyer? Can I call a lawyer at this time? The answer is yes, you certainly can. I would do it once you've left the encounter. But for some reason, if you cannot, you can call a lawyer right then and there. That is a consensual encounter. And because it's consensual and you can leave, the courts have held that you do not have the right of due process during those encounters. That's the first one. The second type of police encounter is an investigative stop or a Terry stop. And this is a little bit different because now you have more rights that come into play because you are not free to leave. Let me give you an example of a Terry stop. Um, you know, the police hear about a, a burglary at a, 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 you know, a business. It's two o'clock in the morning. The business is closed. The alarm went off. They're approaching the scene and they see a guy with a bag, you know, a big bag over his back and he's holding a crowbar in his hand. He's 100 feet away from the front door. They have the right under the, these investigative stops or Terry stops to detain that person using force if necessary because it is articulable to them. They can explain in court why they thought that person was breaking the law. And so in that situation, they can stop that person and detain them, but it must be based on reasonable suspicion. It must be based on reasonable suspicion. So to use my analogy, if the uh, burglary in progress is happening, you know, at 123 Main Street and a mile away, someone's walking down the street with the bag over his back and a crowbar in his hand, they cannot articulate why they thought that person was causing the problem a mile away. I hope that makes sense. They must have reasonable suspicion. But here's the thing. If you are detained in those situations, you do not get Miranda rights. You do not have the protection of Miranda. So anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You can also be detained and frisked for officer safety. They can pat your body down and look for weapons. If you're carrying a firearm, like we all do, uh, they have the right then to seize that firearm temporarily under the pretext of officer safety. Now, some sub points you have to be aware of. You are no longer free to leave in these situations. These are not um, consensual encounters. Don't try to leave. However angry you might be that you were falsely stopped, the way to deal with that is later on the next day with that officer's supervisors or in a court of law if you end up being charged with a crime. Do not try to come to a resolution right there with that officer by leaving. That will not work. Number two, you still, even though you are being detained, they may still ask for your consent to search. Let me give you an example. You are walking home down the street. You're half a block away from your, your backyard, from your garage. Uh, you, you're walking towards your garage. You are stopped by an officer, and they say, we have suspicion that you were involved in a crime. We're going to pat you down. And they ask where you live. Of course, shouldn't answer any questions. But if you do and say, I live right here, man, let me go. That's my garage right there. They might be tricky and say, well, that's very interesting. You're, you're so close to where the situation occurred. Would you mind if we searched your garage? We're looking for a stolen this or a stolen that. So even though it's an investigative stop or a Terry stop where you cannot leave, they may still ask for expanded consent-based search approval. Do not give that to them. Under no circumstances should you ever give the police consent to search your property, your person, or anything else. Do not give it. And number three, you still do not have to speak to law enforcement. So even though you are not free to leave, even though you could actually be in handcuffs for this detention, you do not have to speak to law enforcement and you should not. Again, if you haven't yet seen it, Go to YouTube, type in Regent University, never talk to the police, and watch every minute 
of that video. It's very important. And number three, the final police encounter would be an arrest. Obviously, it goes without saying you are not free to leave the situation if you have been arrested. And number two, following arrest, you will be searched. There's no two ways about it. You're going to be searched. Consent is no longer required. It's not an issue. Don't try to fight that. You're going to be searched whether you want to be or not at that point. But at this point, you have more constitutional protections. You have due process rights. Most especially, you have Miranda. And one of your Miranda rights is the absolute right to say nothing. As you should always do, exercise that right now more than ever. Anything you say to law enforcement after you've been Mirandized can and will be used against you in a court of law. It is the way it works. As is the case with consensual encounters or investigative stops, after an arrest, do not speak to law enforcement. You simply have nothing to gain from doing that. And finally, you will have the option to call a lawyer. It, it, it just depends on where you're at. It might take you an hour. It might take you a couple of hours. It might take you a half an hour. Um, no one knows the details of that situation, but you will have the right to seek counsel, and you absolutely should. Now, we're not lawyers. We are gun rights activists, but many of our members are asking us these questions because, again, we need to know how to interact with law enforcement because we're in a different world than we were a couple of years ago. Uh, there are still great cops out there. I meet them all the time, not because I'm being stopped for speeding, but because of my day job. But we, we have to realize that things are different and we can still respect that position, but we can still also protect our rights using information like this video. So guys, hope this is helpful for you. Um, by all means, join the fight for freedom today. Hit the link below and join up as a member today. And we'll keep you guys informed as always. Share our video and stay free.